Hi YouTube friends, Gail's here, and I'm here with Ken again today to do some recording. Say hi, Ken. Hello. Today we're going to be tra playing Traveler's Road, a uh, d and inspired visual novel. Looks pretty cool. Once again, I tried to pick one that wasn't too girly for Ken and me to play. <laughs> <laughs> so he wouldn't be giving me strange looks. <laughs> why, why would I give you strange looks? <laughs> you do it all the time. <laughs> well, I guess. Right, whatever. <laughs> Whenever I make you do questionable stuff. <laughs> you heard that first. You heard that here first, guys. <laughs> Take note. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Nice little menu. Uh, welcome, adventurer. What will you be called during your journey? Gales. Because I'll be doing Gales. And Ken will be doing the uh, party members. Okay. Choose Please your choose your pronouns. That's pretty cool. Like, that is pretty always cool. like to see that. We're going to do she, her. Safe travels, Gales. It's time to depart. Well, let's look at the background before we depart. It looks pretty cool. Very storybookish. Yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah. Very nice. You adjust your pack one last time. It's not that heavy, but you know it. It feel it'll feel like lead digging into your shoulders in a few hours. You give the horse a gentle pat on its neck. You guess they're doing the real heavy lifting during this journey. Ready? Ready if you are. Ready. Let's get going already. All right. Let's go through the job scroll again. Oh, and then just to clarify, Altmund is this guy, Ken. And then, yeah. And then Rain is this guy. Yeah. Or, you know, they. <laughs> I caught on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, really? You really need to know what, it's, what, uh, what it says. Uh, let's just check it to be, again, to be sure. Or, again, we, you know, we've done this before. Uh, yeah, let's just check it to be sure. All right, fine. Jeez. Oh, wait, I did the wrong voice. See, you're see. You're, <laughs> it's okay. I do it all the time too. It okay, takes okay. it takes a while to get in your head which character is which. Right. Thank you. So the objective is to get the goods on the car to use more safely. The journey will take roughly three weeks. Once we get there, we will meet Miss uh, Redfield at the warehouse. I'll keep a log of the journey and anything out of the uh, out of the ordinary. Anything out of the ordinary, like you're developing a sense of humor. Uh. Otman shakes his head and turns to the front of the car to lead the horse. Unfortunately, the weight of the goods means you'll be traveling on foot. The cart is too heavy for an additional three people. When you set off, the sun is just barely peeking over the horizon. The weather is clear, and you make a good pace for a few hours. Another nice-looking background. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, I really like that, actually. I like the style. Mm -hmm. uh, the second you stop for a break, uh, Rain immediately drops their gear to the ground and lets themselves fall down in the grass. Otman carefully sets down his pack and disappears behind the back of the cart. Uh, I want to check on the horse. Does the horse have a name? <laughs> you stretch through that, that. Like whenever I play D&D, that's the, always the first thing. Whenever somebody introduces an animal, I'm always like, what's its name? <laughs> if I have speak with animals, I'm going to ask its, its name. <laughs> <laughs> you stretch going through your usual routine. After telling the horse he's doing a fine job and making sure his harness is secure, you catch movement in the corner of your eye. Altman's checking if all the boxes are securely fastened. You should get some rest, need some help with that, or we're not carrying anything fragile. Hmm. Uh, we'll ask if he needs some help. It's all right. Too crap in here for two people. When Otman is satisfied those boxes won't be going anywhere anytime soon, he finally agrees to sit down with you and Rain. You close your eyes and enjoy the sun on your face. Your break is brief, but after a light meal, you feel like you can weather another few hours of travel. Few people travel this road, though you pass some other travelers, your journey has been peaceful and quiet. Well, at least the weather is nice. We want to walk at the front or walk at the back. 
Jeez. Um. Oh, frantic. Yeah, I usually like to walk in front. Altman glances at you when you fall into stride next to him. Everything okay? Yeah, I just wanted some company. You sure? I don't think funny company is something I've been called before. Not at all. You're fun to be around. Or maybe I like stubborn grumps. I mean, both of those things can be true. <laughs> well, okay, are you talking about the game now? Or are you talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> the game, obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're kind of grumpy, but you're not really that stubborn. Well, in the morning, I am. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're... Stubborn, too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely grumpy Papa Bear vibes in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I will say you're fun to be around. Well, I guess you'll find out soon enough. What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means we got to keep reading, Ken. All right, fine. <laughs> this one's a little more simple, but it's still pretty nice. It gets the job done anyway. Yeah. When it eventually gets so dark, Otman finally agrees to make camp for the night. You're pretty satisfied with the distance you've managed to travel for the day. Your feet are tired, but it's nothing you're really, you're not used to. You've been an adventurer for some years now, and you're used to traveling long distances on foot. After feeding the horse and removing its harness, you look around the spot you've decided to sleep. Gather firewood or start preparing a meal. Uh, well, I think you need fire before you can make a meal, right? So, right, I, I mean... Think, I think that makes more sense. Altman gives you a grateful smile when you follow him to gather some dry wood from a thicket nearby. Between the two of you, it doesn't take long before you have enough to keep the fire going for a good long while. Otman's bundle has gotten pretty big, but he's holding it with ease. Uh, that should be enough. When he turns to you, there's a leaf stuck in his hair. We could just leave. We'll brush it off. We'll be nice. When you raise your hand to Otman's face, he warily takes a step back. What are you doing? Hold well, still. You have something stuck in your hair. Uh, Otman relents and tilts his head towards you for better access. You brush off the leaf. Once you do, Otman looks up at you. It startles you for a moment how close he is. I mean, why would it startle us? We were the one who moved towards him. <laughs> right. Uh, thanks. With arms full of firewood, you return to the camp. Soon dinner is served and you gratefully tuck in. It's a hearty stew that promises a good night's rest with plenty of energy for the next day. The three of you are all hungry and tired, and for a while, no one speaks. Once you're done eating, you linger around the fire, each of you busying yourself with your own things. Otmund is writing in the travelogue. Uh, Rain is reading their spell book. Uh, is sketch in your journal, organize your pack, or enjoy your time off by doing nothing. Uh, let's sketch. I like this sketch. You draw the scene before you, a cozy campfire with your two companions. After a while, it's time to rest. Otman offers to take the first watch, and so you and Rain bundle up in your bedrolls and drift off. For a few days, it's smooth sailing. There's no sort shortage of Otman and Rain's bickering, but even though their personalities clash, you know they'll get the job done. It was like this last time, too, except you didn't have to spend this much time together on the road. Your employer, Miss Redfield, was satisfied with your previous efforts and asked you to take on this job as well. Though when you hear Rain and Altman snap at each other over the correct way to pack rations, you can't help but think slaying a few goblins is easier than spending three weeks with both of these two. <laughs> so I don't know if it's going to do this, but this is definitely something that you could show instead of tell. Like you could definitely like instead of telling us that they're snapping each other the correct way to pack rations, you could have them. You could have it in dialogue, you know, I'm just pointing that out. But maybe it will do that. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> During one of your breaks, you find yourself sitting next to Almond. This is a lot different than our than our previous job, huh? Right. But it's easy money. Uh, so you're an adventurer for the money or too bad you're stuck with us longer this time. Well, I'll do this one. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta earn your keep somehow, right? Isn't there more to life than that? But you seem to enjoy fighting. 
I mean, yeah, there is more to life than money, but I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, being an adventurer for money. Mm-hmm. We'll just say you seem to enjoy fighting. I suppose I'm lucky I get to do something I'm good at. Again. But, but I hope I won't have, uh, but I won't have to during this journey. You chat for a little while longer, and you find that Otmund isn't all that willing to join you in conversation. Maybe even he gets a little bored out of being on the road. <laughs> uh, after your usual routine of making camp and getting something to eat, it's time to get some rest. Like the previous days, you see Otman getting ready to take the first watch. Uh, sure, we'll offer to stay up with him. Want me to stay up with you for a while? Otman glances at Rain, their sleeping form huddled close to the campfire. They're out like a light. Feel free. You take a seat next to Otman. The fire pops and crackles, keeping any animals around at bay. Huh. <laughs> What's so funny? I'm used to traveling by myself. But sitting around a fire with someone else beside you. Well, it's nicer than I expected. So you're a lone wolf, huh? If you want me to think of it that way. And what's life look like for this wolf? Are you looking for a story? Know any funny ones, or I'd like to know more about you. Yeah, we'd like to know more about him. Ask away. Uh, about the scar, tell me about your family, how you come you're always so grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll start with family. That's a pretty basic thing to ask somebody. My family? Well, it might be easier to show you. Amon retrieves a faded, worn piece of parchment from his breast pocket. When you lean closer, you see a small family portrait consisting of two adults and five children. The youngest child can't be older than a year or two while Otman looks to be a young teenager. Everyone's smiling, one of the women in the p- picture holding the youngest child on her hip. Uh, Otman points to the faces, giving them names in turn. My uh, ma'am died too young. It was, it was hard uh, on my ma, raising uh, five kids all by herself. Um, never got enough time or money to spare. His expression softens when he talks about them, and you can tell he cares about them a lot. Oh, so we can ask. Okay, so it goes around. All right. About that scar. Uh, nothing special about that one. I was young and in over my head. Courage and strength go, go hand in hand. I simply wasn't strong or skilled enough. What happened? A bear attacked our village. Some fools angered my mother with a, with a cub. She followed them all the way back, and I can't blame her. But people panicked, and we had, uh, had to restrain her somehow. I jumped in without thinking and nearly got myself killed. Someone managed to sedate her with the magic, uh, and she was brought back to the forest in her cub. But that was a lesson I, I won't soon forget. Mm. If it was from a bear, you'd imagine it'd be like, like a rake kind of scar, right? Yeah, not just one big scar, just maybe like... Like individual three or so, three or four. Or something yeah, like that. that looks more like a like something you'd see from like maybe a weapon or something. I don't know. It's a little jagged too. I don't know. That's that's kind of my thought too, actually. Like, Unless maybe just one of the claws got him real good, but I don't know. I think that'd be kind of hard mm-hmm. to get just hit by one of the claws. Uh oh, I do like the character designs though. I don't think I mentioned that, but mm-hmm. they're really nice. Um, sounds like you were the restless type. I think that was pretty brave of you. I mean, kind of both. <laughs> we'll say this one because it's nicer, though. Huh. Brave or just plain stupid? I mean, both can be true. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Otman laughs. We won't ask him why he's grumpy because, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of personal. It's kind of mean. Yeah, kind of mean. I mean, unless he likes getting picked on. I don't know. Like, some people are like that, but, like. I don't think he's re- been really that grumpy from what I've seen. He's just kind of quiet, yeah. but, but I wouldn't consider that really grumpy. It's just, mm-hmm. I don't know, kind of introverted, I guess. Yeah, sure. But yeah, I haven't really been getting grumpy vibes. Not It's not Papa Bear in the morning, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just in the morning when I'm waking up. I mean, it's like every other part of the day, I'm fine. <laughs> 
But once again, maybe it's, uh, so maybe if you had shown him being grumpy, like when him and uh, Rain are having their arguments and having that character interaction, it would have shown through more. So if that's a trait you want to do, then make sure you show that in the character. Not just tell us and expect us to believe it. We want proof. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And that, that's all you want to ask. Thanks for telling me. You chat for a while longer, regaling Otman with some stories of your own. You even manage to make him smile a few times. Night falls deeper around you. It's cold and you shiver. You gratefully hold your hands to your little fire. I'm shivering. I just get a little bit chilly and I huddle closer to Otman. I'm cold. Warm me up. Hmm. <laughs> we'll huddle closer. I mean, that's kind of a little forward, but... that's Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. It's I like, like the forward answers, though. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Are you that cold? Yes. Besides, guys usually like it when you're forward. I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any guy that would probably complain to a girl snuggling up closer to them. Unless, unless maybe they're taken, obviously, but I don't... Mm. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> I don't think, you know. Anyway. Almond raises an eyebrow at you, but let's you stay there. Soon your eyes grow too heavy to keep open. You bid Otman walk good night and get some rest before it's your turn to keep watch. When rain eventually wakes you, Otman's cloak is draped over you. You blink at a few times in surprise, gently running your hand through the fur. Aw, see, that's sweet. That's he's, sweet. He's not grumpy. He's sweet. You glance at Otman, but his sleeping face betrays nothing. You keep it draped around your shoulders during your watch while the sun slowly rises in the east. It's warm. Another day, another stretch of road to cover. You pass some other travelers today. A young man who tries to sell fortune readings to you. Two hirelings who pass with you without a word. An older woman who offers to share her ale. Rain befriends everyone you talk to within minutes, and Otman flusters when the woman casually mentions that he's been looking at you the entire time. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't... I wasn't trying to, uh, do anything. Oh, he's got a blushy face. Aw. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Well, if it's you who's looking, <laughs> or if you say so, uh, we'll say it's okay. We, we trust him. Your cheeks are feeling hot, and you can't quite look Otman in the eye. So, is that an invitation for me to keep looking? <laughs> you cannot believe he just said that. The older woman cackles behind you, clearly enjoying the show immensely. <laughs> <laughs> She's breaking out the popcorn. You smack Otman's arm. <laughs> this, is, this is the, you know, medieval version of soaps. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. You know. mm. Daytime TV. <laughs> <laughs> You smack Otman's arm and walk off flustered. You resume your journey and the rest of the day it's business as usual. Today the menu consists of a spicy soup. Otman roasted some potatoes in the fire, campfire, and you blow on them so you don't have to burn your mouth. Like Rain just did, and who is now swishing water around in their mouth to soothe the burn of their tongue. Otman just sighs and shakes his head and sends you a look that says, Can you believe this? You fight the urge to laugh. Belly full of, and body worn out from the walking, you're asleep within seconds. It's a great overcast day today. To distract yourself from the walking, you play word games with Rain and poke fun at Altman when he gets frustrated about not knowing the answer. When Altman signals he's found a good spot for break during the middle of the day, he stretches his arms. Ugh, I feel stiff from all the walk. Anyone up for some sparring? Please, tell me you're kidding. I'm very serious. We just walked for hours. When we finally get to take a break, you want to spar? I mean, I'm okay with sparring. Something, you know, mm -hmm. a little entertaining. Good to stay in good form, even when it's peaceful. You know, when you're adventuring, you never know when you know you need to put your skills to the test. You don't want to get rusty. True, true. Excellent. Uh, rain groans and flop backs into the grass. He just wants to sleep. 
Have fun, crazies. <laughs> we will. Don't worry. We'll be over we'll be over there. Wouldn't want to disturb your beauty sleep. <laughs> You and Atman. See, see, that was nice. See, there we finally got some character interactions. Because I was going to say, it's mostly just been the MC interacting and them telling that they've been interacting. So it's nice to actually get to see them interact with one another. Even if, you know, they, they do kind of... Uh, or, or uh, what's the word? Opposite kind of mm. vibes. Yeah. Kind of yeah. clash. They clash. They, they clash, clash with one yeah. another. <laughs> uh. You and Otman head off a little sideways of the cart. You roll your shoulders a few times. It'll be a nice change of pace to get some practice in. You fight. Oh, I get to choose. With <laughs> magic, with weapons, with a mix of both. Come on now, you know you're a spell sword. Yeah, I was going to say, why not both? <laughs> right. Why not both? You wait for Otman, weapon in hand, and magic crackling in the other. Otman grun uh, grins and places himself in a fighter's stance, unsheathing a sword. A beat passes, then you launch yourself at each other, striking and dodging each other at an easy pace. You take a while to get used to the other. You may have uh, fought alongside Otman before, but not as opponents. Wonder what class our main character is. I think the one guy's a fighter and the other guy's a sorcerer, so I'm thinking some kind of support, maybe like a bard or something. Maybe. It's kind of hard to say really offhand, but... Or we could say druid. Druids are my favorite. <laughs> true, true. But if we're a spell sword, I think bard makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, you take a while to get used to the other. You may have fought alongside Otman before, but not as opponents. After a few rounds, Otman draws back, grinning. The exercise has brought out the color in his cheeks, and you imagine you look flushed as well. You're not half bad. Though I doubt you can beat me. Yeah, he's capeless now. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Cool. You raise an eyebrow. Is that a challenge? Uh, Otman grips his sword again, grin widening. Give me all you've got. You slightly bend through your knees, gathering your strength. Then you surge forward. It's difficult. Almond is strong, and from what you've been able to tell so far, an experienced fighter. You decide to... Uh, catch him off guard with your timing, or throw a feint to distract him. Uh, I say, throw a feint. You make as if you're going to come around from his right, but position yourself to pivot at the last second. Otman catches on, but he's just a fraction too slow, and you still manage to land a hit on him. He loses his balance, and you seize your chance. You throw yourself at him to tackle him to the ground. Within seconds, you're on top of Otman, pinning him underneath you. You laugh and lightly tap him on the chest. What was that about me not beating you? Is this what we call a fluke? But his tone is light and the look on his face tells you you've gained some of his respect. Yeah, he likes being pinned, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Both of you are panting and sweating. Ooh. And Omen's <laughs> collar has gotten loose during your sweating. Ooh. <laughs> Man, this went from delivery to, like, make out. Wow. Okay. Get off of him and help him up or linger for a moment. Tempting. <laughs> Tempting, but... Uh, I don't know. Do I want to do the nice thing or the teasy thing? I don't know. Like, Kind of both. It's hard to say because I mean, like, I, like, we're a bard. We're gonna, we're, we're a bard. We're gonna. <laughs> you just like that's it. I'm just a bard. We're let's, a bard. Let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes trail a bead of sweat running on his neck. You can feel the warmth of Altman's skin on yours. You're startled out of it when you hear Altman snort. Oh, my eyes are up here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help that I like what I see. <laughs> sure. Like normally, normally I don't like it. Like, like, like if this was a strangers to lovers, I, I mm. wouldn't like to be so flirty right off the get bat. But I get the feeling these guys have been traveling with each other for a while. Yeah, yeah. So I'm okay with being a little, you know, flirty bard mm. type of character. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you laugh and get up. When you offer a hand, you help him up. He accepts. Tommen stumbles into you a little when you pull him up, but by the grin on his face, it's hard to tell whether that was on purpose or not. Nice work. Let me know if you ever even want to spar again sometime. 
Will do. You're a worthy opponent. Thank you. Likewise. Oh, nice little forest background. Mm -hmm. Like it, like it. When you continue your journey, you notice the terrain is slow, slowly becoming more foresty. Trees are taller, the ter terrain is hillier. Soon the trees become so dense, you're pretty sure you must have reached the brush water forest. Otman confirms uh, your suspicions. Okay, we've reached the forest. We should stop and adjust the cart. We have to go slower here. I'm on it! Rain gently helps the horse out of its harness and starts to exchange the straps for ones that suit the terrain better. Otman takes care of the heavy lifting, literally. He holds up the front of the cart so that the horse can easily step away. <laughs> Showing off. Yep. <laughs> wow, so what else can those arms do or quietly enjoy the sight? <laughs> Jesus. I'll we'll just say, <laughs> not you're just showing off. Because, I mean, he kind of is. You have time to snark. Maybe you <laughs> can get to helping me with uh, the boxes. It takes a bit of time and effort, but the three of you manage to adjust the cart so that while going slow, traveling will go easier. Though the forest gets quite dis dense at times, there is still a well-trodden path that the horse doesn't have too much trouble with. Since the going is slower and more tiring, you're inclined to agree when Rain requests a short break. Besides, did you hear that? You stop and listen. There's the faint trickle of a creek nearby. I don't know about you two, but I've been dying to get a proper wash. Alright. We can fill up the water canteens while we're at it. Ooh, a little stream? Mm -hmm. Creek? A little creek or something, yeah. Uh, you don't get in the water. <laughs> Woo! Bath time. You dip a toe in. <laughs> I mean, I, I pro I'd probably want a bath after sparring and, you know, walking all the time. Yeah, all the, all the ick. <laughs> you enthusiastically follow Rain's example and strip down to your underclothes, jumping in after them. Cold! <laughs> Rain laughs and splashes water in your direction. Otman has just silently been washing up at the edge of the creek, uh, fill the water canteens at his side. Hmm. Let's do it. We'll splash. I, th I think we're going for Otman, so we'll splash him okay. to be flirty. With a glint in your eye, you turn to Otman. It's not really fair that he's left out of this, right? You playfully splash some water in his direction. Otman wasn't expecting that and sputters in surprise when the cold water <laughs> hits his face. <laughs> All right, get your butt over here. Before he can blink, Otman has stripped to his underclothes and is in the water with you. He makes little waves when he wades over to you. Um, hi? Otman doesn't answer, just grins and scoops you up into his arms. The next second, he throws you in the water. <laughs> You're thoroughly soaked in gasp, coming up for air, wet hair sticking to your forehead. I do like that payback. Payback? Sounds like you enjoyed returning favors tenfold. I'm nothing if not generous. Once all three of you are done splashing around, you huddle around the fire. Rain puts on a nice hot soup, which is soon giving off a fragrant smell. You can't help but to wrap your hands around a steaming bowl. Ahmed is writing in the log again, and you lean closer to see what he's scribbling down. He looks up when you do. Curious? It's just a practical thing. You can look at it look at all, all you like. Hmm. He's right. He writes down the distance you've gone, keeps an inventory of rations, the weather and wind direction, any breaks you take, the horse's condition. Well, at least we'll be able to track our back to track back our journey by the footstep. Uh, oh. Don't hurt the thorough. Uh, I'm glad we can count on you. That's kind of you to say. I'm not just being kind. I really mean it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Somebody needs to do that. You know, all that responsible crap, because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that all too well. <laughs> I am an INFP. I am the. I am skilled at winging it. <laughs> I am not a planner or an organizer. Mm -hmm. I am creative and messy, and I love it. This is why she keeps me around. 
Uh, Otman looks away for a moment, hiding a smile behind his hand. You, you have a bad habit of saying things that... Things that what? That make me wish this journey took longer sometimes. Don't tell me I'm slowing us down by talking to you. Because I can, and I will stop, if that will get us to Yans, y- Yams more uh, quicker. Otman laughs, his eyes crinkling. It's one of the rare moments where you get to see a glimpse of genuine happiness on his face. And here I thought I was being enjoyable company. So how should I uh, take what you say, then? Uh, oh, that's mean. You can take me any way you like. <laughs> you should take me at my word. Uh, bard answer, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> For a second, Altman just looks at you in surprise, but then he leans in a little closer, dropping his voice to a murmur. Fan of uh, playing games, are we? I mean, Bard. Depends. <laughs> you up for being a player? If you're the one dealing cards, it might be. Rain interrupts your conversation by announcing... <laughs> Poor Rain, he's probably... Or they're probably feeling like a, <laughs> a third wheel. <laughs> right? <laughs> We we're gonna we're gonna need like a polyamorous route. <laughs> <laughs> that way nobody feels left out. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I could put in a request. Rain interrupts your conversation by announcing that food is ready to be served. It's only when you break away from Otman that you realize how close you have been sitting together. You're a little too distracted to notice Otman has his eye, uh, eyes on you more than usual during the meal. The soup warms you up from inside out, and you feel pleasantly tired out. The others must feel the same way, because Otman suggests you travel only a little further to find a good spot to make camp. It only takes you seconds to fall asleep. It takes you a few more days to go through the forest. You've been underway for well over a week by now, and you're really starting to feel it in your feet and shoulders. On the twelfth day, you pass the point that marks the last stretch until Willow's End, a small town where you'll have a brief stop to stock up on supplies. Rain groans that they can't wait to sleep in a proper bed again. When the trees open up and you've, you're met with a familiar sight of the road trailing off into the distant hills, you say, It's not that you mind the job, it pays well, and it's not like you're being asked to fight a dragon. Aw, not a dragon! <laughs> Seduce the dragon instead. Oh, jeez. But, well... <laughs> Otman's face doesn't betray a thing, but Rain is looking at as bored as you're feeling. Maybe it's the monotony of the journey, but all you are carrying a little more restless energy than usual. In Rain and Otman's case, this unfortunately manifests in them squabbling over the smallest things. How to start a campfire using rations correctly, feeding the horse. Today is no different, and you're rubbing your temples in exasperation and irritation. Rain. I told you to switch and clean the water canteens. When I went to fill them up this morning, I noticed mold growing in them. Are you trying to poison us? What? I did clean them! Well, clearly you didn't do a good, uh, do a good job of it. That's not fair. Those things are heavy and I did my best. Sounds like you did a half-assed job because you don't like carrying them. Excuse me? More like it's done, if it's not, if it isn't done your way, then it doesn't matter how much effort someone puts into it. Just doing your best isn't going to keep us from getting sick after drinking. Can you two please stop? Well, that's not fair, Gales. Ogmit started by saying that I'm... Typical. Shifting the blame to others, just running away again, I see. Uh, Rain glares at Ogmit, and they're already opening their mouth, no doubt ready for, with a sharp retort. Stop! I did not take this job to play the role of a mediator. Can you please, t- can you two please hold it together until we're at Yamsmore? I don't care how you do it, but deal with it somehow. Don't let it sit and get worse over time. Finally, someone who speaks with some sense. This includes you, Otman. Otman's frown deepens and he picks up the moldy canteens. Fine. Clearly, it sh- it, I should do it if it needs to be done well. That's not. But Otman's already walking away, canteens in his arms. Ugh! Whatever, meat for brains. 
They two walk away with a huff in the opposite direction of Otmund. Well, at least they're not shouting at each other anymore. You figure you should go help Otman, though. Those canteens really are heavy. And maybe you can talk some sense into him while you're at it. You can already see him kneeling in front of a clear stream a few miles away, minutes away from the cart. He looks up in alarm as he hears your approach, hand already on his sword, but relaxes when he sees it's you. Thought you could use a hand. Well, at least you're offering. I don't see Rain stepping up to fix any of his mistakes, or any of their mistakes. You sit down next to Otman. A faint breeze ruffles his hair. Overhead, you can hear the faint cry of Mon Moon... Moon Geese? <laughs> Moon Geese. Moon Geese. Okay. Maybe it's like a fantasy creature. Maybe. Or maybe it is a thing and we're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it seems so specific, right? Like, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, can't you be nice to Rain for once? So, what's really the matter here? Yeah. At the bottom one. Yeah. Yeah. You know exactly what, what the matter is. I don't know what Redfield was thinking, asking someone like them to take on this job. They're clearly not cut out for it. That's not what I mean. I mean, why you're always at each other's throats? You did kind of blow up at them, you know. If they didn't give me so much reason to get angry at them, then I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have to. Would you yell at me like that if I had done something proper if I hadn't done something properly? Well, I wouldn't uh, I suppose, but What makes that so different? You're brave. Strong too. And so far, you've done your part in this job and done it well. Thank you, but <laughs> is that what you value, strength and courage? It's what I live by. Hmm, I can, I, yeah, I can see his point, but, I mm -hmm. mean, there's more to, to you know, that's, that's not the only things that make a person, you know, Mm -hmm. A person. <laughs> true, true. There are other virtues out there. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say that's ridiculous, because that's kind of not unvalidating his point of view. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But being strong doesn't have to mean one thing, do you think? Yeah. Tell him, Gales. What do you mean? Use that charismatic charm. <laughs> Roll persuasion. <laughs> Maybe Rain doesn't particularly shine in doing chores, and maybe they're not even the, not the most suited for the job. But I know that you know they're very capable. Sure, with magic. And only magic. Uh, I kind of want to ask both. Mm-hmm. Uh, what makes you so sure you're right? Yeah, I think he needs to get to know him better. Being on this journey has been proof enough for me. All I can see, all I can see them do is goofing around and not taking things, not taking this seriously. I know you're trying to make me see the good in them, but it's being strong and brave are what I've had to do all my life. What do you mean? I'm not sure what what would have happened to me otherwise to Ma, to Ma and my little siblings. It, I if I was strong. I would have taken on for jobs. Uh, I, I was taken on for jobs, uh, which which meant money. And there's just been, I always, I was always the youngest, and a few times. Otman's voice sounds pained. He pauses for a moment, eyes on the gentle rush of the creek in front of him. Well, the most dangerous jobs were were paid best. You recognize his tone. You know how it feels to kill and. You know how it feels to see people next to you crumple to the ground. How old were you? I can't, can't have been more than uh, 15. Horrific image manifests itself in your vision. A teenager version of Otman, pale and terrified as his other party members are slaughtered in front of your, his eyes. Only 15. Your heart sinks. Aww. You remember the family portrait Otman showed you. Uh, him holding hands with one of his younger siblings. He looked to be around that age. One time there, I was uh, I was with a group, and it all went south. 
it was one of my first jobs, and it was clumsy. I, I was clumsy and afraid. After the people died almost instantly, I got hit too. Not dead yet, but bleeding out fast. The only uh, the other half uh, turned tail immediately. I called out for help, and they they saw me and ran. Just left me to die. Oh, I'm so sorry, Otman. Uh, let him finish at a distance or offer a hug. Aw, yeah, he needs a hug. Wordlessly, you skip closer, holding out your arms in a silent invitation. To your surprise, he accepts. Amen leans into your embrace, resting his head on your shoulder. Aw, that's sweet. His hair tickles your cheek. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. It's good. It's good to get things off your chest like that. I've uh, never, never told anyone about it. I don't mind. I'm here if you want me to be. Thank you. He closes his eyes for a moment in an effort to calm himself. When I dragged myself out, uh, out of there, uh, by some miracle making it back to a farm nearby where people were kind enough to uh, patch me up, I swore I would, I'd never forget that. I'd never forget that. Uh, I could only uh, rely on myself. That there wouldn't be anyone else I could count on. And I swore I'd be fearless and strong so nothing would ever face me. And so that my family would be safe. That sounds like a heavy burden to carry. I can't tell myself to think about things like that. Why not? Because it'll start making me look long for someone to carry it with me. Uh, it's okay to admit you need help. I believe you can do anything you set your mind to. Both! <laughs> Mm, we'll do the first one, though. Sometimes people need to hear that. Amon lets out a soft laugh. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. It's pretty easy. Watch. Amon and I need help. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> that is definitely you. <laughs> I mean, it's not so much me help, but seeing, you know, Ken go do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, well, true. True. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, his lips curl into a smile despite himself. How can I help you? By taking good care of yourself. For a moment he looks startled, but then his eyes soften. Hesitantly, he reaches out to take your hand in his. His hand is warm and thick with calluses. Thank you. You sit together in silence for a while longer. I'm sorry you had to go through that. You didn't deserve for that to happen to you. And for what it's worth, I think you're strong. Training will do that to you. No, I mean that you overcame those things all by yourself. Hmm. Strength doesn't always have to mean one thing, and sometimes the bravest thing you can do is ask others for help. And I'll be there to help you. You should give it a try. Yeah, I'll be there. You don't have to make any promises like that. I mean, I don't have to. Yeah, I'm not saying that because I have to. I... Thank you. Listen, I know we'll part ways again at the end of this, but... I want you to know that your company means a lot to me. Maybe we'll cross paths again, or we get to decide what we make of this. Uh, yeah. We can see what we want to do once we're done with the job, don't you think? Nothing is set in stone. I... Uh... Yeah, uh, I guess so. You pause and give him a cheeky grin. Oh, totally barred. <laughs> Unless you were looking forward to getting rid of me. No, no, not, not at all. I, uh, you're right. Let's just wait until this is over. He gets to his feet and points to the canteens. Let's uh, get those cleaned and filled, shall we? Between the two of you, it doesn't take much time to get the chore done. Before Otman can carry them back to the cart, though, you touch his arm. Don't forget, okay? All of us are strong in different ways. Rain, too. You can't judge them based on how little you know about them. Who knows what kind of things they've had to overcome. I, uh, guess you're right. Doesn't mean I'll start liking them or anything. No, nah, you don't have to like them. You just have to be civil. Right. Respectful. 
I'm not even sure I can respect them even after what you said. Oh, come on, Otman. <laughs> well, that's okay, baby steps. I guess. <laughs> Acceptable. Completely rejected just as you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. <coughs> Uh, the two of you walk back to the car, holding the heavy, filled canteens. Once the canteens are securely fastened to the car, Otman turns to Rain. They're beside the horse, idly stroking its mane. Their eyes look red and puffy. You feel bad for leaving them by themselves. Aww. Rain, look, I might have jumped to conclusions about you uh, a little too quickly. Sorry about that. He holds out a hand. Let's put it behind us. Rain takes Altman's hand, shaking one slowly. Okay. I got too mad to. Sorry for the things I said. Aw, oh, there you go, guys. There we go. You breathe a sigh of relief at the sight. Now you can rest a little easier. Hopefully they'll keep it up during the rest of your journey on the road. The next few days, there are still some tense moments every now and then, but overall, both Rain and Altman seem to make an effort to be cordial. You're still relieved to see Willow's end on the horizon, though. It, it'll be a nice change of pace to see some other people have other things to do besides just walking, and most importantly, you get to sleep on an actual bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. The night before you reach the town, you all prepare for your arrival. While you're strapping up your belongings, you don't notice you're humming until Otman sits down next to you and comments on it. You're in a good mood. Looking forward. Yeah, it'll be good to see something that's not road and fields, aren't you? I suppose. I'm just glad it will be arriving there on schedule. God forbid we don't arrive at the exact calculated time. The ground may just collapse under our feet. Someone has to make sure we get to uh, Yams more on time. Uh, come on, aren't you looking forward to sleeping on a nice, fluffy mattress? I found bugs in my bedroll to last me a lifetime. Really? They haven't bothered me much. Guess that means we should share your bedroll then, right? Uh, <laughs> lucky. <laughs> uh, bard answer? Bard answer. Bard answer. Oh, Otman laughs and shakes his head. <laughs> uh, I, I can't believe some of the words that, that, that come, out of, come out of that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me to sh uh, don't tempt me to shut you up. <laughs> hmm. Try and see what happens. Otman drops his voice and leans in closer. You can feel his breath on your cheek. If you keep tempting me like that, I really might. Hey, <laughs> whose is this? Cockblocker. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I keep finding this flask every morning somewhere around camp. Dang it! <laughs> you quickly pull back from Otman to turn around and see your <laughs> and you a water flask. That's exactly what it is in front of them. Otman sighs and walks over. <laughs> it's completely killed the mood. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not mine either. Let's put it over there for now. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> Dread, plant foiled again. <laughs> By Rain's adorable innocence. <laughs> the next morning you depart at sunrise. Your journey goes smoothly and nothing of note happens except it's like all of a sudden there's a lot more people on the road. They're coming from all directions, though most appear to be traveling from north and east, unlike your little party that's been traveling from the south. Huh, Willow's End isn't that big of a town, right? Shouldn't be, no. Then what are all these people doing here? Maybe they're just passing through like we are. Maybe. Many of the traveling folk have carts and wagons of their own, though not everyone seems to have had a smooth journey. On the side of the road, you spot a family of tieflings. Their wagon is painted with swirling patterns and bright colors, but it's standing at an odd angle. You're pretty sure you hear a child crying. Aw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Aw. <laughs> You take a few quick steps toward Ford and tap Otman, who's walking at the front on the shoulder. Hey, those people look like they're in trouble. Let's see if we can help. Where? 
You point him in the right direction, with the coming and going of all the travelers around you, and with many of them stopping for a meal or to rest, they're easy to miss. All right, let's go see what the what we can do. And maybe we'll get some information out of it, too. Mm-hmm. So he stops the car at the side of the road while you inform Rain of what's happening. When you approach the tieflings, it becomes more and more visibly ob- obvious they're in distress. Their beautiful wagon is scratched and damaged, and it looks like the axe of one of the wheels broke down. The adults are beaten and bruised, and their young child quietly sobs. You suspect it wasn't a simple road accident that got them into this state. Hi there, travelers. Are you doing all right? The tieflings look up in alarm at your approach, and the child immediately hides behind the three adults. A beautiful woman with curved purple horns hesitantly speaks up. Um, said woman, right? Yeah, woman. Uh, not quite. Not quite, no. We have run into some trouble on the road. I can see that. It looks like the wagon. The, it looks like your wagon took a beating. But Otman crashes down and inspects the damage. Nothing that can be fixed, though. At least enough to get you to uh, Willow's End for uh, for some solid repairs. Oh, you'd help us. I I'm afraid we don't have anything to offer you except our thanks. Of course, don't worry about repaying us or anything. Rain steps forward and furrows their brows. They lean in and examine one of the nastier bruises on one of the tieflings' faces. That looks like it could use some care. Why don't you sit down and let me take a look at it? The tiefling man nods and slowly sits down. He's clearly shaken up by whatever happened to him. Rain takes out their medical kit and gets uh, to cleaning the injury. You sit down next to Otman, who's taken off his cloak, and as a wriggled under the cart, you hand him the tools he asks for while you quietly speak with the tiefling woman. What happened? What kind of trouble did you run into? We were ambushed. Some bandits held us up some miles ago, and they took everything valuable we had on us. When we tried to resist, they beat my husband's and I. Tears are gathering at the corners of her eyes. I know we should be glad we escaped with our lives, but in our rush to get away, our wagon broke down. It's going to be okay. We're here to help. A pair of big eyes peeks from behind their mother's back. Hello there. What's your name? You smile at the tiefling child. Their horns are just barely poking through their mass of curly hair and they shyly meet your gaze. You want to do the kid voice or you want me to do it? (laughs) I I guess I will. I guess I will. Can you do a kid voice with that deep voice of yours, Ken? I I, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. Try it. Okay. It'll be funny if nothing else. (laughs) Yep. Ah, my name's Alexo. Oh, see, that's good. Excello, <laughs> Excello, hey, uh, Excello. Okay, I think that's how you say it. Okay. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> uh, Jello, maybe? I don't know. Excello? I don't know. Nice to meet you, Excello. I'm Gales. We're here to help you and your parents get to Willow's End. Excello wipes the tears from their cheeks and slowly Aww. nods. Okay. <laughs> Rain is apparently finished with attending to the wounds of the two other tieflings because they walk over and gently touch the tiefling woman's shoulder. I've uh, patched up uh, your husband's best I could, ma'am. Uh, would you like me to take care of your of your uh, scrapes as well? Right. Yes. She follows Rain, uh, Exello in tow, like a little duckling sticking to their mom. All right. This should uh, hold up for a little while. After getting himself out from under the wagon, Otman tests the wheel's mobility here and there. He's sweating and runs a hand through his messed up hair. <laughs> I mean, he's sweating, so I mean, he, do- he technically he mm-hmm. does look hot. I'm just saying. Right. Uh, I look hot. <laughs> <laughs> You're sweating, right? Here, I have a handkerchief. R- right. Yes. Thanks. I mean, it could have double meaning. Mm. You slowly but surely help the tiefling family get back on their feet. After Rain has finished giving them some much-needed first aid and Otman declares the wagon ready for the road, they thank you again and again. Thank you so much. We won't forget your kindness, travelers. May you be blessed. We'll keep your safety in our thoughts. After saying your goodbyes, you gather your things and get ready to resume your journey. But before you can leave, Exello runs uh, up to you and Otman. They have something white in their hands. Um... Otman gets on one knee, leveling himself with the child. He gives Exello an encourage- encouraging smile. What is it, little friend? Oh yeah, because he has lots of the little brothers and sisters, so he's mm. probably good with kids. Yeah. It's very attractive in a man. Mm. Exello hesitates and looks up at you. 
My mama said you uh, you were nice people, so thank you. Gazello pushes a white flower into Otman's hands. Thank you. They shyly presents a flower to you as well. Aww. No thanks needed. Take care. Take good care of your parents. All right. I will. Are you and the pretty silver person parents too? Pretty silver. They must mean rain. Uh, we're just good friends, or we're just colleagues. Uh, I'd say we're friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're more than just colleagues. Oh, so just like Mama and Papa. <laughs> <laughs> now hold on. <laughs> but Xella's already scampering off with a smile. They wave at you from their wagon. <laughs> That's adorable. Yes. Bye bye. You continue onwards and arrive in Willow's End at noon, which is, to your surprise, bustling with activity. Banners and flags have been strung along the buildings, music seems to be playing everywhere you look, and children run through the streets playing and laughing. The moment you try and go through the town's gate, the crowd swallows you. Before you can really get swept away, Otman grabs your arm and pulls you closer. Careful. Let's not lose each other. You nod, glancing back to the cart. How are you going to take this with you? From the looks of it, it'll be difficult to squeeze just through the streets. Otman seems to be thinking the same thing, because he turns and gently guides the horse and cart back at just outside the gates. Wait here. I'll be right back. Didn't you just say that we shouldn't lose? And he's gone. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Rain folds their arms and leans against the cart with a smirk. I wouldn't worry about him getting lost too much. He, he uh, couldn't stay away from you for long, even if he tried. Aww. Your cheeks suddenly feel a little warm, and you quickly turn your head. Well, he still should have told us where... Oh. You spot Amun's tail, tall frame over at the outer walls. It looks like he was walking, talking with one of the guards posted at the gates. His eyes catch yours, and he waves. Then he turns and slowly makes his way back to you in rain. He has to stop several times to let the stream of other travelers and visitors pass. All right. We're all set. We can leave our things over there. Well, we'll have to pay for it to be watched, but I think we can put, it on, put that on uh, Miss Redfield's tab. What? You're okay with leaving the, the precious goods with strangers? Who are you? What did you do with Odman? <laughs> well, I don't like it, but how else are we going to get in? Okay, so where can we do that? Falling on an unpaved dirt road, you find a temporary stable turned storage set up at the outer edge of the walls. Large tarps offer some protection from sun, wind, or rain, but the many carts, wagons, horses, and other means of transportation people have used to come and visit Willow's End. It costs you a whopping three gold pieces for a day and night, and Otman scowls when he hears the price. Rain attempts to haggle, but the woman in charge snake, uh, shakes her head, take it or leave it. Flying Otman pays the fee. You pat the horse's neck and farewell. Bye, friend. Take care for now. Don't worry. They'll feed you here. Well, that's, that's cool. So proud of people. Oh, wow. Then you find yourself in the front of the gates once more. When you go in, you can practically feel the festive excitement and the air on your skin. You feel... On edge, excited, neutral. Uh, I like festivals, so I'd probably feel a little excited. Mm -hmm. This is what you've been missing during your journey. Some fun. By the way, Rain is grinning ear to ear. They feel the same way. Otman gives you a tired, wry smile. No matter where you look, there's activities, juggling, music, acrobats, full food stalls. You wonder what they're there all, what they're all for, and if you could. Ugh. And if you'll be able to sneak away and explore later, I can read. You have <laughs> to use your elbows at times to get through the mass of people and eventually settle for walking behind Otman, who plows through the crowd like it's nothing. Rain trails behind you, looking around in wonder. Wow, this is amazing. I wonder what this is all for. It's not usually this busy around here, right? Your eye catches the banners strung across the buildings. All of them feature the same symbol, a sun with circles inside it. Uh, is this a history check? <clears throat> I guess so. Hmm, a sun, or maybe religion. Maybe. I don't know. What does the DM say? Doesn't this region usually celebrate some kind of sus sun festival around this time of year? 
I think it's a festival rain. Otman blinks a few times and then realization floods his face. He groans. Of all the weeks to be traveling through this area, it must be hosted at Willow's End this year. The turning of the sun, I believe. A festival? Oh my, I can't believe our leader didn't anticipate this. Tis tisk. <laughs> Otman gives Rain a flat look. Make merry all you like. I hope you realize this might mean sleeping outside. With this many people in town, there may not be any rooms available. Nah, well, it's nothing we haven't done before. <laughs> Rain's smile slips a little. We should try, though, right? Of course we should. Let's get to it right away. After tearing Rain away from a group of dancers, you go through a list of ends Otman prepared beforehand. Unfortunately, Otman seems to be right. All of them are filled to the brim. Even when Otman offers to pay a higher price, the innkeepers shake their heads. They couldn't let you stay even if they wanted to. Okay, this is the last one. Fingers crossed now. When you step inside, an elderly elf is reading behind the counter. They look up from their book with a welcoming smile. Uh, I'll, I, I'll, I'll do it. I'll okay. Do it. okay. Okay. Welcome, travelers. Looking for a place to stay? Indeed we are. Do you happen to have anything available? Well, you're in luck. I happen to have a room to spare. It'll cost you, though, I'm afraid. This time of year and all. That's fine. We just need one as long as, we, as the three of us can uh, fit. Yes, yes, that won't be a problem. There's even a, parti uh, a part, uh, ah. partition, <laughs> partition. <laughs> for some extra privacy, if you wish. Wonderful. After paying for your stay, the elf hands you a key with the number 11 written on it and gestures to the stairs on his right. That is a guy, so. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> we knew. Yep. <laughs> there you are. Have a good stay. Let me know if I can do anything for you. Thanks, we will. You head up. You head on up, the floorboards creaking underneath your feet. The end looks old and worn, but well-maintained. Nice. This definitely increases your chances of not having a leaky whoop roof. <laughs> Otman opens the door and squeezes inside. You and Rain follow. It's a simple room on the small side, but with a partition as promised, a small washroom can be found behind a door on, in the entrance hallway. Rain drops her pack as soon as they can, rubbing their shoulders. I wonder if they have a bath around here, or a bath house, or anything warm, or anything with warm water and clean towels, really. I'm not picky. Hmm. Mm. I'm sure we'll find something around here. I just hope they'll have space with all the people visiting. Mm. Otmund? Gods. What's wrong? Are you okay? I Yes, I'm fine. This is, uh... Well, come see for yourself. Curious, you head further inside. Otmund gestures to the bed, an exasperated expression on his face. What's the problem? I don't see... Oh. This is the only bed, isn't it? To your surprise, Otman huffs a laugh. <laughs> not that it, it, it's, it's not that bad. There is a single cot behind the partition, but that's all. You eye the double bed. Aha! So that means two of you would be sharing. I see. Sounds like you and Rain finally get to cuddle up together. <laughs> Please, I have standards. <laughs> Absolutely not. You laugh and duck when Rain throws the pillow at you. It hits Otman in the chest, which doesn't help your giggling at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these guys are great. I like their dynamic. Um, I don't mind taking the floor. So, Otman, you don't hog the blanket, right? Right, so who's going to take the floor? <laughs> I, uh, no. Uh, I don't. <laughs> great, me neither. An awkward beat passes, and Rain slowly settles themselves down on the single cot. Okay, then. Love birds. Just don't forget there's another person <laughs> sleeping here at night. <laughs> right. You, 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 can't, you can't stop right there. Thank you. Hmm. Let's just focus on getting our supplies restocked. Hmm. What? Come on, we just got here. Can't we relax a little? You can relax when you sleep. Fine. Work yourself into an early grave, but don't drag me with you. 
Oh, uh, background looks nice, by the way. I like the little sun and moon portrait. That's really oh, cute. Oh, yeah, that is pretty cool. It's cute. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, Otman, let's ha rest a little, all right? All right, all right. I suppose we can take inventory while we sit down for a moment. Rain rolls her eyes and you suppress a smile. You sink down next to Otman, who's taken a seat on the edge of the bed. It's mostly just rations for us and for the horse. I'd like to get some more rope and oil for our lantern as well. Ah, and uh, we need to replace one of the uh, harness straps. It broke two days ago. We might need to get some tool, uh, tools for that. I don't think we uh, have uh, anything for that specifically. Right, well, you should like, uh, you should like, uh, you sound like you've got it covered. Uh, now, if you excuse me, there's a festival waiting for me. Get back here, Rain. We all need to do our part with these errands. As if you need me to do all of this, if I go with you, uh, if I go with you all, you'll do this na do uh, you'll do the uh, do is nag at me for not buying the right beans or something. Then how about we each pick something to do? We can agree on meeting back here in an hour, and then we're free to do whatever we like. Does that sound good? Fine, as long as I'm not stuck with Udman. I'd be happy about uh, not having to babysit you if it was if it if I wasn't worried you'd get yourself uh, robbed. <laughs> Rain bristles. Wow, thanks. I feel so trusted and motivated to complete my little task. Right. Sounds like I'll handle the oil and rope then. Rain, do you want to be in charge of food? Uh, well, I didn't want to see if uh, I I did want to see if they had any uh, nice herbs uh, around here. Uh, don't go over the budget. Gods, give it a rest, will you? <laughs> With a huff, Rain snatches up the allotted gold pouch for rations and the list of things to get and stomps off. Gales, if you ever want to ditch this stick in the mud, come find me at the market. They slam the door shut behind them. You raise an eyebrow at Otman. Was that really necessary? Uh, Otman frowns. Come on. Aren't you worried that they'll get distracted again and, and return with overpriced things we don't need? Uh, yeah, have a little faith. Otman looks a little guilty. Uh, you're right. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say sorry to Rain, not me, but you can do that later when we all get back. You hold out a hand. Can I have some gold for the supplies? Sure. Actually, if I'm covering the harness... Uh, I think uh, you, we might need, we might be heading uh, towards the same area. Would you like to go together? If we're going the same direction, we might as well. All right. I have everything ready. Let's head out. You lock the door behind you and slip the key in a pocket. Oh, Otman emptied his pack so he'd have something to carry the supplies in. When you head out, out again, you're immediately hit by the wave of noise, music, laughter, and general mer merriment. You breathe in. You love this. There's just so much to see and do. You can't wait to be done with your errand. It takes some elbow grease to get through the crowd, but it's easier with Otman at your side. At least most of the time. People still dance over your toes and bump their shoulders into yours. <laughs> you pass an elf who's singing particularly loudly, waving their mug of ale around wildly. Either by intoxication or a plain misfortune, they trip and are on course to collide with you. You instinctively try to move back to dodge it, but with the crowd around you, there's just nowhere to go. Watch it. Otman quickly presses you against the wall of a storefront to get you out of harm's way. The elf half falls, half stumbles onto the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> they still splash some of their ale on Otman's cloak, but you're unhurt. You're right. Uh, that was close. Thanks. Of course. Gotta be careful with all these party folk. Maybe you're imagining it, but you're pretty sure Otman lingers a little longer than really necessary. I don't mind. <laughs> you turn to the elf and offer a hand. They wave it away, laughing, and stagger to their feet. They go on dancing like nothing happened. Dang. You want whatever they had to drink. Maybe it'll help you zone out during another of Otman and Rain's arguments. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See what you've done, guys. You're forcing Gail to become an alcoholic. <laughs> Drowning her misery or her, you know, going insane of you guys bickering back and forth. I mean, she is a bard. Yeah. <laughs> she probably already is a little bit of a drinker. Right. Nothing wrong with that. 
You continue your slow route through the festivities. Thankfully, Atman seems to know exactly where to go. Even amidst all the chaos, he has a good sense of direction, and you can already spot the shop you need to be at in the distance. Have you ever been here before? No, not in this town in particular. But I've been to other places in this area. Then how do you know exactly where to go all the time? Oh, I just memorized the map. Your steps falter for a moment. Memorize the whole... Before you comment, can comment on how that is both ridiculous and impressive, you've arrived at Bracers and Bootstraps, your general store for everything you might need. Or so the sign says. Next to the general store, you spot the Black Anvil. Most likely, Otman will find what he needs there. Uh, re ready to go in? Otman nods and gestures to Bracers and Bootstraps. After you. Aw, cute little shot. Very cute, very cute. Very detailed. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Is that a computer? <laughs> 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 this? It kind of looks like a computer. It I'm guessing it's like not. Computer. I'm guessing it's not, but that's what it looks like. <laughs> right. No, maybe it's like a board or something, because I see notes on the back of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> but but like, God, that does look like a computer. It looks like a laptop or something. <laughs> yeah. Like a monitor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> a bright little bell jingles to announce your entrance. It's not busy inside. You suspect most folk would rather frequent bars and dinners than general stores on a day like this. An elderly halfling smiles and nods his head at you from behind his counter. <laughs> uh, elderly, you say, huh? Okay. <clears throat> uh, welcome, welcome. We might be, we might you, what might you be looking for, dear travelers? Some fine wine, perhaps some shine for those boots, rope, climbing kits. We got them all. <laughs> his eyes twinkle as he takes an ottoman beside you. Or perhaps a gift for your handsome friend, eh? We carry the latest trends of anything that a couple might wish for, even during more intimate moments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Altman chokes behind you and erupts in a coughing fit. <laughs> Aw, he's so cute. Gods, mm -hmm. please, why? Oh, tell me more. <laughs> Bard answer. Actually, could you show us some of the... <laughs> uh, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> you barely managed to suppress your laughter. You don't think you've ever seen Ottman so flustered. All right, all right. Just give just some lantern oil and rope then, please. Of course. We can find those in the, in the, with the adventure kits behind the corner on your left. Do call me if you need any help finding the, the right choice. You thank him and find the supplies where he, he promised they'd be. You also spot lots of other things, like the shopkeeper said. They really do carry all sorts of things. Ottman doesn't give you a chance to linger, however. He's still not meeting your eyes and seems keen to get out of here <laughs> as quickly as possible. <laughs> but if you're quick, you could get something before you head out. <laughs> um, I could get something for Rain, don't get anything, get something for Ottman, or get something for yourself. Hmm. We'll get something for all and why not? Yeah. We'll wine and dine him a little bit. <laughs> you think of the Warren family portrait he carries with him. If he put it in a locket, it might survive for much longer. Aw, see, that's a really thoughtful thing. Yeah, gift. that is thoughtful. I like that. You select a simple locket with a pattern of swirling engravings on it. Oh, we can... So get something for both. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but if we do, will he get, will Ottman get mad at us if we spend, if we, if we, uh, spend all our money? I don't know. We'll do it anyway. You have a feeling they'd really appreciate some nice smelling salves. You pick one that smells sweet and flowery and add it to your purchases. We won't get anything for ourselves, though. Mm. I don't need anything. I'm good. <laughs> I, I get to tease, you know, mm. fighter guy. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. That's the gift itself. You get everything you need for the road, and the halfling waves you off with a smile. Be blessed by the turning of the sun. Enjoy the festival, dears. You say your goodbyes and step out into the street once more. Ottman swiftly wraps up his purchases of the black anvil as well. You're glad he didn't take forever or tries to haggle like Rain does. The sun is much lower in the sky when, than when you arrived, and you're starting to get a little hungry. 
It doesn't help that more and more food stalls are popping up, spreading mouth-watering scents of freshly made food and snacks. Otman catches you eyeing the food stands. You know, I wouldn't be mad if you were if you uh, look around a little. We're technically done with our errands. Uh. Well, in that case, okay. Promise I won't be long. Just stay close to me, okay? I don't want to lose you. Aw. Aw, yeah, let's hold hands. You hold out your hand and wiggle your fingers. <laughs> Otman stares at it for a second, then looks up at you with a faint, faint blush. Um. Otman steps closer and holds your hand firmly in his. His warm hand engulfs yours. Oh, he passed the test. <laughs> Holding hands in public. <laughs> Good job, Otman. Oh, lead the way. There's so much to choose from, you're not sure what to pick. Freshly steamed dumplings, sweet and sour rolls, baked pastries, roasted vegetable sticks, sticky honey tarts. Your eye falls on. Savory dish with fried rice and vegetable, with rice and fried vegetables, sweet sticky dumplings, a mix of, of filled bread rolls. Ooh, those all sound good. Yeah. I'll do filled bread rolls. That sounds that sounds like something I'd probably eat. Yeah. They're topped with seeds and have a beautiful golden brown finish. You pick a variety of fillings. The seller claims they're a Willow's End specialty. Otman has managed to find an empty place to sit for a moment while you dig in. It's a tight squeeze and you're pressed together shoulder to shoulder. You're too preoccupied with the delicious smelling food in front of you to pay that any mind right now, though. You take a bite and <laughs> Gail's has priorities. <laughs> <laughs> Food before flirt. Mm -hmm. It tastes fantastic. You let out a satisfied groan. Gaz, oh, that's good. You sure you don't want any? I'm fine. I'd hold it out a little longer until we're back. You shrug. You do you, Otman. You'll just be over here stuffing your face in total bliss. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> you got something on your face there. He reaches out, and as soon as his thumb touches your cheek, you freeze. He looks back at you, equally startled. I, I am. I just... Sorry, I just... I, I do this all the time, too, for my siblings. You you know, I wasn't... Aw. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. A <laughs> uh, bar dancer, I guess. Yeah. Oh? <laughs> for a moment, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> he says something sweet, and then the bard makes it pervy. Makes sense. Yep. For a moment, amidst the cacophony of noise and music, everything melts away. The only thing you can see are Otman's warm brown eyes looking into yours. His callous fingers hesitantly brush along your jaw, where you're pretty sure there's no food that needs wiping away. <laughs> <laughs> a particularly loud round of applause and cheering startles you, both out of the moment, and you both quickly pull back. You avoid each other's gaze when you struggle through the parting crowd once more. <laughs> you safely make it back to the end. Not long after your arrival, Rain nudges open your room's door. Their arms are full of packaged food and they're struggling to hold it all. Ugh, this is so heavy. If I had known, I would have made you go, Odman. <laughs> Odman quickly gets up to help Rain take care of the load. Rain sighs in relief as their load is lightened. I'm sorry for uh, snapping at you earlier. I should have uh, trusted you to do your part. Oh, I, uh, yeah, okay. Apology accepted. Now, help me with all this, please. It took forever. But I, I did get some uh, pretty good deals. You put all the goods away. Otman has settled on the single chair in the room. Going through the inventory, you get a glimpse of rain getting ready to go out again. Now would be a good time to give the solve you bought you bought earlier to rain you approach them as they're shrugging on some clean clothes hey rain when i was out shopping earlier i got you this you hand them the little bottle of salve as soon as rain sees what it is their eyes light up oh that's so sweet of you thank you so much i've been dying to get something like this i really appreciate it <laughs> hug or shrug uh friendly hug is okay right I would think so. Rain immediately steps up to give you a thank you hug. Thanks again. I, I'll definitely use this. No problem. I hope you enjoy it. After fixing their hair one last time, Rain waves at you as they head out again. All right. You two be good now. 
Aw, but where's the fun in that? And with that, they disappear out into the festival. After you've rested for a while, your mind wanders to the sounds of music and chatter outside. This is what you've been looking forward to ever since you arrived here. Festival time. You turn to Otman, who, after eating something, has been scribbling in the log. Hey, I'm going to step out for a bit and check out the festival while we're, while we're still here. Ah, right. The festival. Uh, well, uh, if you happen to find, if you happen to want some company, I wouldn't mind going with you. <laughs> no, who would turn that down? I like that. The more the merrier. Wonderful. Just uh, give me a second to get ready. Once he does, you head out. Otman stiffens the moment the wave of sounds and people hits the both of you. Honestly, you're a little surprised he offered to go with you. He doesn't really seem like the partying type. I, I don't think that's why he's going, Gales. <laughs> Something tells me that's not the reason. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Just say the word and we can go back anytime you need. Don't worry. Uh, if I want to leave, I will. Uh, now we're two. <laughs> he sounds like me. When I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> I like I like festivals and, you know, st stuff like that, but in small doses. There's a limit, definitely. <laughs> Introvert. The lanterns that have been strung along and across the buildings bathe everything in a soft, glowing light. With the darkening sky above and the merry crowd around you, it feels magical. For a while, you let yourself be carried along with the flow of the partygoers. There's all kinds of people here. You spot elves, halflings, half-elves, half-orcs, tieflings, humans, dragonborns. You pass tieflings juggling knives and dragonborns spewing different colors of fire. There's juggling, dancing, music, drinking. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> Atman is content to follow you to wherever you have an interest in going, but you want him to enjoy the festival a little too. Uh, dancing or arm wrestling? Hmm. I like dancing, but he'd probably like the arm wrestling. Mm -hmm. Let's go check out the arm wrestling. Otman follows your gaze. Looks like it. Did you want to give it a try? They're offering prizes for anyone who can best their champion. And that is a very nice set of arm bracers. The engraved details are beautiful. They're, they've most likely specifically been made for the festival. Come on, Otman, I'm going to win myself that pair of bracers. When you push through the crowd and arrive at the booth, you see a very muscular half-orc sitting at a table. A sign tells you that it costs you a silver to try and best her. If you win, any prize you like is yours. Around the arm wrestling table, people are be betting and cheering on the challenger in front of the half-orc, a young half-elf that's trying with all his might to push her arm down. But you can already tell he won't win this match. The half-orc's just playing with him and letting him flounder. When the half-orc has had enough, she winks at the man in front of her, then slams his arm down at the table. The crowd lets out a good-natured laughter and ahs, and applause rings as the half-orc flexes for the crowd. We got, yeah, we got, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> barred strength, woo! <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> you confidently place down a silver on the table, and take a seat across the half work. She chuckles. Oh. <clears throat> I like that glint in your eye. Determined, are you? What will you be trying to win? That pair of bracers. Hope you're ready to lose. You have a good eye. Show me what you've got then, friend. It's close. There's a moment when your arm wavers and you're sure that you've lost, but the half work is as red in the face as you are. Come on, Gail. Let's show her what you're worth. You summon the last bit of strength you have, and you slam her arm onto the table. The crowd erupts in cheers. You laugh and rub your arm. That's definitely going to be extremely sore tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but you won. The half-orc applauds you, smiling. Congratulations. The pair of bracers is what you said you wanted. Yes. Here you go. Enjoy. You've been, they've been crafted with great care. You take the bracers and do a victory fist pump. <laughs> Hell yes. Did you see that, Otman? Otman claps, too. I did. Well done, Gales. I knew you could do it. Maybe we should uh, arm wrestle sometime. I'm kind of uh, curious if you could beat me, too. Yeah, maybe in a year or so when your arm is recovered from this. 
You still think you have a chance after witnessing that? Please. You flex and Ottman laughs. You move away from the booth to get the other people's space. Anyone else think they can beat me? Come on then, place your bets and see if you can win a prize. Uh, well, you can do both. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's do both if, if he wants to. Hmm. A group of musicians near a larger square has caught your eye. A lot of people around them are dancing. Dance. Uh, I uh, no, I uh, I can't dance. <laughs> oh, everyone can dance. Then I'll teach you how. You slide your hand in his, slightly tugging at him towards the square. I think it'll be fun, but if you really don't want to, we don't have to. All right. You join the group of people moving to the beat of the music. There's lots of couples dancing, kids too, with their parents or their friends. None of it is too wild or complicated. Many people just sway from side to side. Here, take my hands. You can trust me. You pull Ottman closer to you and put one of his hands on your shoulder. The other rests on your right hand. Okay, now just follow me. I'll go slow. We go back, back, side, and forth. See? You slowly take him through the movements. Ottman keeps his eyes on his feet with a concentrated frown. Uh, back, back, like this? Yes, just like that. You're doing great, Ottman. Um, just try not to step on your feet. <laughs> you smile and move a little closer. Don't worry, even if you do, I won't be mad. Ottman's shoulder relaxes a little bit. Thanks. I, I suppose this isn't so bad. I will take that to mean you're enjoying yourself. Ottman's eyes soften and he no longer looks at his feet. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I am. You dance for a little longer, clapping for the musicians once they take a brief break from their music making. Alright. Get away from the crowd. Tired out already? Uh, I think we can uh, get some air if we go up uh, those stairs ahead of you. You follow Ottman through the crowd and go up a couple stairs. Even up here, it's be been beautifully decorated with flags and lanterns. Mm -hmm. Aw, that's a nice... Well, that's a nice shot. Image. Yeah. Very festive. Mm. Yeah. For a while, you both look out into the festivities below you in a comfortable silence. The fresh air, cool up here, is wonderful. It feels good to take a break from the noise. By Ottman's content smile, you guess he feels the same. Oh, right. Now would be a good time to give the locket you bought earlier to Ottman. You turn to him and fish the present out of your pocket. Hey, so when we were out shopping earlier, I got you something. You hand him the locket. It's been carefully wrapped in some brown paper, and Ottman holds it while giving you a curious look. For me? You didn't want You didn't have to. I know, but I wanted to. Ottman gives you a warm, genuine smile and unwraps the package. When he holds the locket in his hands, his eyes widen in surprise. This is... I thought you could use it for your family portrait, you know, to keep it safe. Ottman doesn't say anything. He stares at the locket, rubbing his thumb over the swirling engravings. When he finally looks back up at you, he's making an expression you haven't seen on him before. I... Thank you. Uh, that's really thoughtful. It's really thoughtful of you. I, uh... He gets the portrait out of his breast pocket and carefully puts it in his locket. I'm really touched. He lifts his hand as if to touch your cheek. Then, as if he's remembering himself, he abruptly halts and jerks it back. It's a little harder to see in the dark, but you swear the tips of his ears are turning pink. Aw. You hadn't expected it to end up on the festival with Ottman, of all people, but you're glad you did. A little like a date, or thanks for accompanying me. It is kind of like a date. Ooh. Is it? I mean, it doesn't have to be, if you don't want that. That was a weird thing to say, wasn't it? Sorry, I won't. No, 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 I I don't. I, I don't mind at all. Think of it uh, as uh, whatever you like. Did you at least have a little fun? No, it was uh, a dr as dreadful as I expected. I was two seconds away from dying. <laughs> you laugh at his obvious attempt at sarcasm. Rain, is that you? Where'd I leave Ottman? Ottman chuckles. It's getting a little late, though. What do you say we uh, head back to the inn? It's fine by me. 
You slowly make your way back, going through the less busy side alleys. Thankfully, Otman always seems to know where he's going. It doesn't take long before you're back in your room. As expected, Rain hasn't come back yet. You can't help it. You feel a little nervous. You undress slowly, leaving on your underclothes and slip under the covers. Amon has his back turned to you as he undresses, and you let your eyes trail over the crisscross pattern of scars along his back. When he turns around, you promptly squeeze your eyes shut. Maybe this will be less awkward if you pretend you're already asleep. But by Amon's Ob soft chuckle, you can tell he isn't fooled. <laughs> <laughs> The bed dips and creaks under his weight as he climbs in beside you. It hasn't occurred to you until now that, even with a double bed, someone as big as Otman is going to make this a tight fit. You peek through your eyelashes. Hi. Ooh, shirtless. <laughs> hey. Uh, don't worry. I really won't steal the blankets or anything. If I do, you can just uh, wake me up. You relax a little. There is no need to get so nervous. This isn't that different from sleeping next to each other around a campfire, right? Okay, same for you. Wake me up if you need. Will do. Uh, sweet dreams, kids. Sleep well. It takes you a while to fall asleep. You can still hear the faint sounds of the festival outside, and Otman's soft breathing beside you is unusually distracting. You didn't have this much trouble falling asleep when you were out on the road. Maybe it's the quiet of the room. Or maybe it's the warmth reading off him so close next to you. But eventually the comfort of the bed beckons you and you drift off. When you wake, your first thought is that you're warm. Also, there's a weight draped over your waist. As you slowly come to your senses, it becomes apparent that the weight is Otman's arm and that the warmth comes from him being pressed up against you. You're cuddling. You resist the knee-jerk <laughs> reaction, reacting mm -hmm. of jumping out of bed immediately. Oh god, so this happened during the night. <laughs> hmm, yeah, feels kind of nice. I like a nice good morning cuddle. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't hurt to stay just a little longer, right? You relax on Topman's arms. Must be nice to be your own personal furnace. He's so warm. Otman mumbles something against your shoulder, and his arm tightens around you briefly. Hmm? What? <laughs> Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Otman yanks himself off you, which almost makes you tumble out, out of the bed. Oh, gods. Gales. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> um, good morning. Otman buries his face in his hands and groans. <laughs> hey, it's okay. I'm not mad or anything. It happens. A muffled reply comes from behind Otman's hands. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no apology needed, all right? Come on, let's get ready for the day. With a heavy sigh, Otman starts getting dressed. You feel kind of bad for him that he feels so guilty. It's not like he did this on purpose or anything. Once you've gotten ready to go out, you need to get Rain to do the same. You didn't hear Rain coming back, but from the great difficulty you have in waking them up, you can guess they had a pretty wild night. No, give me five more minutes. Rain, it's time to leave. Get your damn butt out of bed. <laughs> Rain mumbles something that is half curses. Gods. At least let me get, at least, uh, at least tell me you got, uh, got to let, uh, let off some steam yourself. Uh, uh, I mean, what do you mean? I <laughs> actually don't answer that. I don't want to know. D nothing happened. Unbelievable. <laughs> I even stayed out longer to give you... Oh, he's trying to be our wingman. <laughs> Good for you, Rain. Mm. Or they, sorry. Mm. Uh-uh, and I'm so sure your generous act will be remembered for the ages. Now get up, Rain. We need to do something to eat and leave. With great effort, Rain tugs on their clothes and shoves their wings things in their pack. You bid the innkeeper goodbye and step out into the street. At this early hour, it's strangely quiet. The party goers are finally gone to get some sleep, though some of them have chosen the streets as their bed. You retrieve their car and horse. Uh, Etman, oh, Otman sighs in relief as he notices, notes that nothing was stolen. You set off on your journey once again, leaving behind Willow's End and its festivities. Hi, you two friends. Editing Gales here. Uh, just wanted to say that I decided to split this uh, visual novel playthrough into two different parts because it ran a little long. But we really enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed watching it. So, 
Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.